today we're going to talk about the neck. As some of you know, I had spine surgery back in 2010 and the neurosurgeon says that I could use three more, but I'm able to stay symptom free with the beauty of Pilates. Um, that's how I got into it professionally full time. Before that I was a personal trainer and I also now teach yoga. We're going to do some neck exercises. These are very gentle that you can do while sitting in the car at the stoplight, maybe waiting for that page to load at work, or perhaps at your kid's softball game, whatever your life may bring you, right? So we're gonna start first with simple neck rotation, and I like my beginners to sometimes put their fingers here, just to remind the shoulders to stay down and back. And you can do this sitting in a chair, sitting in your car, sitting in the bleachers, but wherever you are, do make sure that you've aligned your spine. So you're not hunching while trying to do these, nor are you pushing your ribs forward, faking posture, but keeping your head down through your shoulders, down through your ribs, down through your hips, to the tip of your tail aligned. So placing those fingertips on your shoulders to remind them to stay long and low, just start to nod your head, or I should say shake your head no. And when I do neck stretches, I like to move into them instead of just starting the stretch. If you've ever tried to stretch a Tootsie Roll, it's kind of difficult at first. But if you hold that Tootsie Roll in your hand for a little while, let it get nice and warm, then the Tootsie Roll can stretch like taffy. So I like to move into the stretch for that reason. Because your muscles become more and more pliable, and then after a few rounds of movement, you can hold the stretch and take a nice deep breath in and out here. Maybe three, just to give your muscles time to stretch. You're focusing on the stretch from the earlobe down through the neck into the shoulders. And bringing your head back to that front gaze and then to the other side. These are also great to do while lying down on the floor. That's a little bit more difficult for me to video for you. Uh, but I do recommend if you're going to do them prone, or I should say supine, sorry, supine, lying down on your back, that you should do them while on a hard floor, like a flat surface, not a squishy bed with lots of pillows. Not quite the same effect. You can also do a beautiful neck rotation um, like that while lying down on your back and your belly. So when you're on your belly, obviously you're not gonna be able to turn your head side to side, but you can turn your head to one side and hold. And the gravity of your body lying down against the floor will really help to open up and stretch those muscles. So three ways to do rotation, on your back, on your belly, or sitting. And we can throw standing in there too and make the floor, okay? Just don't try it while standing on your head, it's a bad idea. Next up, we're gonna go into a lateral flexion or basically like a side bend of the neck. Now this one's tricky because people tend to shrug their shoulders a lot on this one and even slightly rotate. Save that for the next exercise. Let's do a clean flexion first. So I like to imagine I have a little bluebird sitting on my shoulder. Yes, it's specifically a bluebird. And I want you to just listen to the bluebird on your shoulder. And then bring that up gently. We don't wanna move as quickly as we do through rotation and then slice it down to the other side. So now we gotta listen to this bluebird. And there's not an angel bluebird and a devil bluebird, there's just bluebirds, okay? And they're both pleasantly peaceful and loving. And come up through center, and then down to the other side. And then after you've done a few rounds of those, now we hold. And you might have some muscles that are really holding on. And you might think, gosh, I can't do these, but I'd like you to check in with yourself for a moment. If you're feeling sharp shooting pain, then by all means, you should stop for a moment. Put your head back upright, take a breath. Maybe try it again, but a much smaller range of motion. If you're still hanging out in here with me, let's come back up and now let's try the other side. But, excuse me, my kitty cat Milo wants to maybe Maybe help. He likes to rearrange my camera though, so we're gonna just be here. What I was saying is that 
when you get into this range of motion, you if you're not feeling a sharp shooting pain, if it's just a little uncomfortable, a little tight, a little different, try to stay there and breathe into it, okay? Your brain needs a moment to distinguish, is it really pain or is it just a space I haven't felt in a while? And then come back up through center. Now, hi Milo, that was great rotation. We're gonna go into rotation and flexion, but we do this in an order. So I want you to first listen to your little bluebird, and then I want you to kind of glance down at him, right? And you're gonna bring your head back up through and up through center. Let's hope Milo goes away from the camera. We're gonna flex to the other side. Listen to the bluebird on that shoulder, keep this one down, and then rotate, look at the bluebird. And come back up by first unrotating and then unflexing. And let's try that again. So flexing over, keep the shoulders down and level. You're listening to the bird on your shoulder now. Look at it. Come back out of the rotation, then out of the flexion. And now the other side. You might find one shoulder really wants to follow along, doesn't know how to let go of that neck. And that's okay, give it a little extra breath, a little extra grace as you rotate and look down at the bird. And then come back up through and to center. Now, we're gonna nod our chin towards our chest. And this is not to be confused with a nod your chin into your neck, which kind of looks like this, right? You get the double chin. Think about nodding your chin towards your chest. Like there's a spot here at the sternum that your, ne your neck wants to roll over and the chin wants to kind of connect to. I like to imagine I have an apple there. And I'll come back up. And now I want you to tip the chin up. And again, this isn't a just flex the back of my skull into my neck and make my neck shorter. This is still feeling the length of my neck and just rotating or pivoting my chin up. Pivot the chin down. Now pivot the chin out and over that imaginary apple. And then pivot back up, feel the length of the cervical or neck spine. And now keep the length of that neck spine and just tilt the chin up. So we're not gonna crunch into the back of the neck. Pull back forward. And here again, we nod the chin over that imaginary apple, feel the length, keep those shoulders down and back. And then you're gonna pull up. And here again, feel the length of the neck. As if, and sometimes it's even helpful to place your fingertips where your skull meets your neck. Find that bony point. And maybe you even kind of pull up on it a little bit, you know, like the massage therapist does when they're trying to lengthen your neck. So find that pivot point, and now just let your skull kind of pivot up and over your fingers, and then back up and through. And that might help you, especially if extension doesn't feel like your friend right now. It is still important, so I'm not allowed to do lots of extension because of the plate in my neck. It doesn't feel great, and at first it felt horrible, but now I'm able to do all those yoga poses and heart openers and things that allow me to get into that space. But you can certainly use your fingers there at the skull, maybe even the palms of your hands if that feels better. But I find that the palms of your hands pull your shoulders up more and if you have neck issues, usually you have shoulder issues. So keeping your elbows lower tends to help the shoulders relax so that you can pivot the neck up and down. Okay, awesome. So start with those and we'll talk more about the neck in just a couple of days.